The island of Sodor gleams in the sun, and every station is filled with flowers. Percy had been working at the docks all day and was tired of the smell of fish. Whew. Come on, Percy, said his driver. Time to go home. Please, sir, can I have a wash down first? Sorry, Percy, there isn't time. Sir Topham Hatt is waiting for us at the sheds. There is to be a festival of flowers, announced Sir Topham Hatt. This sign saying best dress station will be awarded to the winner. Please help with the arrangements. The engines were excited. My favorite station is for Farquhar, said Thomas. Mine is Maithwaite, said Toby. Percy, what's yours? Percy was too tired to think properly. The docks, he murmured. Ha, sniffed Thomas, we can tell. Toby laughed. The docks are full of fish, not flowers. All right, then, Arsdale End. That's my home, replied Toby. That's why I like it, especially when you're there and not here saying I'm silly. Good night. <laughs> Next morning, Percy was proud to be sparkling again. His train of freight cars were being loaded with vegetables and flowers. These are for Maithwaite, said his driver. They'll display them on the platform. On the way, Percy saw Harold. Why is Harold buzzing about, he puffed. I haven't time for a race today. What's that, said his driver. Why, bless me, it's a ram. Now we'll be late. I should have known that Harold was trying to tell us something. Bah! I've got just the ticket to get him off the track, cried the fireman. Food. He found some cabbage leaves. The ram chomped happily away. Please, can we go now? When Percy arrived at the station, his driver told the station master what had happened. I've heard about this ram. He's always hungry. A little while later, the station was decked with flowers. Maithwaite will definitely win first prize, decided Percy. He left his coaches and went to a siding where no one could see him. Ah, time for a snooze, he thought, but it wasn't. We'd better see what all that noise is about, said his driver. Percy was shocked. Flowers were scattered everywhere. It's that ram. He's made a meal of the station, too. Then there was trouble. We can't get into the waiting room, the passengers cried. Why not, asked the station master. The ram won't let us. Everyone looked at the ram, and the ram looked at them. He's not alone, exclaimed Percy's driver. Let us out, begged the boys. We're sorry. Well, look at that, said the station master. The boys are the culprits, not the ram. He was just making sure they did no more damage. We thought it would be fun, but it wasn't. We'll put everything back. A few days later, Sir Topham Hatt invited some of the engines to Maithway, winner of the Best Dress Station Award. I'm sorry, Toby, whispered Percy. You made the right choice. Then Sir Topham Hatt made an announcement. There is one more prize for our good friend, the Ram. Here it is. And I'll eat my hat if you don't like it. Then Harold landed. The wind from his blades blew Sir Topham Hatt's hat off. <laughs> well, seems I wouldn't be able to eat my hat even if I had to. Everyone laughed, and the only sound from the Ram was a contented hiccup. Remember that, Thomas? I do, Percy. Anyone else want to share some stories? I do. I do. Then go ahead. Excellent evidence. It was autumn on the island of Sodor. There had been a terrible storm. Lots of tracks were blocked. And lots of engines had broken down. 
but Emily made it to Brendan Docks with her load. Well done. You're the only engine to arrive on time. You are excellent, Emily. That made Emily very proud. Excellent Emily, she thought. I like that. Sir Topham Hatt had a very important job for Emily. Jeremy cannot land at the airport, and my mother is on board. The storm has blown some metal tanks across the runway. You must collect Trevor from Farmer McCoy's. Take him to the airport so that he can clear the runway. Then, Jeremy can land. Oh, yes, sir. Excellent Emily can do it. Then, Murdoch popped alongside Emily. I'm going to Farmer McCoy's, too. Lots of lines are flooded. Take the Wellsworth track. I'm not going on that track. It's much quicker to go through the forest. I'm excellent Emily. I can make it through. So, Emily cut through the forest. But soon, she was up to her axles in water. Nothing will stop me. Excellent Emily will find a way through. So she puffed on through the water. It was hard work. At last, Emily jumped out of the flood. But now, she was late. Thomas was waiting at the junction. There's a fallen tree. It's blocking the track. Harvey's coming to clear it. I'm excellent Emily. I don't need Harvey to clear the track for me. And she puffed proudly away. Emily chucked up to the fallen tree. I'll easily push this out of my way, she puffed to herself. Emily pushed as hard as she could. But the tree didn't roll out of the way. It stayed in front of Emily. Now, Emily had to push the tree up a hill. It was very hard work. And Emily was getting later and later. At last, Emily came to the top of the hill. The tree rolled away. Emily raced down the other side. Emily met Duck at a junction. Trevor is waiting for you. Don't worry. I'll be there soon. Some of the tracks ahead of everybody. If you get stuck in the mud, it's going to take even longer. I'm excellent Emily. And I know which tracks to choose. Duck was worried. Emily raced through the village. She rattled through the valley. I'm nearly there, Emily thought. Emily steamed around the final bend and straight into a big puddle of mud. I'll pop you this, thought Emily. Then there was trouble. The track started to sink. Emily was stuck. She didn't feel like excellent Emily anymore. Oh no, now I'll never get Trevor to the airport. 